Hey, welcome to Farm Talk Friday, the full farm edition. It is uh, July 21st, 2023. I'm Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Giovanna. Hello, Aww. honey. Hi, baby. You're looking uh, super farming. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, normally on for Farm Talk Fridays, I shower and shave. <laughs> Not this week. Normally, I put on, you know, a clean t-shirt. Not this week. I got my, I have my coveralls on. One-piece coveralls. Uh, it was bright outside, so I had my sunglasses on. Um, and we're both kind of soaked yeah, we're in sweat. Yeah, we're super sweaty, filthy. It's great. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no makeup, just melting. It's a melting day today. Yeah, we're in the rainy season, but it hasn't rained that much in the last couple of weeks. It's been super hot and humid. Awesome for I like a sauna experience or a steam bath experience. Yeah, um, more like I, a sauna. I just got done whacking a bunch of weeds and trimming some trees. And that was fun. I love using my machete. And we have a little, we have a little uh, electric uh, chainsaw that I like using to trim branches. Uh, earlier today, I made about four or five of these. Uh, this is lime juice. Uh, we're, we have tons of limes, tons of citrus tons right now. Tons of limes. And so I just started juicing them. And then, so one went in the fridge and then we're gonna freeze the rest and hopefully it'll last a long time. Yep. And then what did you have uh, left over after the squeezing? The lime peels, yes. the rinds, which um, you can put around, if, if you've got like um, leaf cutter ants or any kind of insects that are attacking plants or trees, you can put them around to as a deterrent. It is said. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, I think we've done that before. I can't remember the results, but I actually, just before we went on live, um, made circles around our Rosa de Jamaica. We put some in our main garden and they got mauled. Mm. Like, I think we have one plant out of maybe eight of them that has leaves on it and the rest of them are sticks. And at least we're going towards the full moon. So I trimmed them again. I'm hoping that will encourage them to leaf out. Um, and then hopefully they'll be protected by the limes. Yes. So we'll see. And um, something I noticed actually when I was putting them, first of all, I wanted to put them face down. So even though it's not raining, um, it's supposed to be raining. And, you know, I feel like they would make perfect little mosquito pools if water got in them. So I don't know if we'd need to cut them up more instead of just half them. So even though I put them face down, like if it rained really hard, they could get all flipped around. And you know, um, this garden is right by our house. So I'd have to remember to go check on like the potential mosquito pools that I put around the road. Maybe that's something that we need to consider when we do the limes is like um, cut them up a little bit more. Permaculture, it's a process. Yes. Yes, yes. So um, usually Ken, well nowadays, because of our friend Siggy, um, she's like, hey, I love your Farm Talk Fridays, but what is it? Set it up. Yeah, I think you should set it up again. I should do it every day. Okay, we're back. Um, hi, Jaunty. <laughs> okay, we're back. Okay, so it's a perfect time to explain what Farm Talk Friday is for those of you that are maybe tuning in for the first time. Yeah, we moved to Costa Rica about seven and a half years ago from Los Angeles. Uh, we're practicing, uh, we have a small little uh, permaculture farm. We're practicing permaculture principles. Uh, which is all organic, but there's a lot of a lot of other things involved with it. It's not simply uh, organic gardening. It's it's it, there's a lot more involved. Strategy. Yeah, it's everything helping each other. You know, everything supporting each other. A little bit of biomimicry. Yeah, and so that's what we do. Um, I teach a hit class three times a week. Giovanna has a nonprofit educational uh, organization called Green Wave. You can check it out at greenwave.eco. 
She uh, is a yoga instructor and a mermaid. Yes. Thanks, Annie. And an author. And an author. And it's Comic-Con week, and I'm yeah. not sure if Zen or Jamelin will see this, but Zen is actually on a panel um, called Ask the Pros. Yeah. And he uses the um, his image that he markets himself with is like his cameo in my comic book, the Rainbow oh, yeah. J comic book. It's yeah. super cute. And I'm like, oh, I see you. So if you don't know about it, get the Raver J novel, part one. You just go to raverj.com and like the comic book is there and the novel and yeah, anyway. So, um, but yay, Comic-Con, go Comic-Con team. So this is what we do every Friday. It's kind of like a little diary, but we kind of keep it more slanted towards permaculture. Yes. And um, so th this is for you to ask me. This, this little oh, thing. yeah. <laughs> honey, what was in our image this week? Oh, thanks for asking, honey. Uh, so in this week's image... So in the Im we every week, Giovanna makes a nice little advertisement to advertise the next Farm Talk Friday. And today, was the le or the, this week had like four photos, right? Oh gosh, I don't know. Was it four? Yeah, I think four photos. Okay, well, I can't check in this moment, but um, I think what it might have been is that, yeah, so it was ho our friend Holly, and she's like throwing up the sign. I think that's the right direction for a P, right? sort of the permaculture sign. So we have this new club that we've um, been talking about called Permaculture Party Club. And it's a way actually to inspire uh, the youths. Um, <laughs> the, the two youths. The two youths. Well, I mean, we only have two so far, but yeah. uh, we're going to get more. And so it's this uh, co-creative endeavor that we're working with kids on. And so we're, we're going to have them actually help create the club. So it's not like, hey, I have an idea, let's start a club for kids and then, you know, we we do everything. It's like we I wanted them to be really super involved and learn business skills and um so anyway, so part of our advertisement this week is the new banner uh that we have on the Patreon campaign that's not like 100% being promoted right now, but I I will start to promote it soon. And that involved Holly, who's um, the mother of Mason, who's one of the two, and she's throwing up the, the P sign for Permaculture Party Club. Permaculture Party Club. Yeah. And I, oh, and then what it was, we had <laughs> um, kind of a kaleidoscopic, fractally, you know, design, and it's it's me and Abby, and, um, and we're trying to do kind of like, you know, the staying alive, move oh, is that that? That's... and we're mirrored like we have a mirror image and um you know i did it for, like it's like a back shot because i yeah. wasn't sure if she wanted to yeah. even though i'm um announcing it uh publicly right now i wasn't sure she wanted like her face yeah. on this campaign or anything so um anyways so uh ryan ackerman is watching he's so uh, and john ryan one of the greatest uh <laughs> granite sculptors of the 21st century not only that, he runs a fantastic, amazing brewery, La Perra Hermosa. And I'm bringing all this up because we need more grain. Yeah. We need more grain. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, La Perra Hermosa provides spent grain that they've used to make their beer. Um, they give it to us and then we dry it out and we put it into the mix to feed our chickens. Yes. And we have given them in the past uh, Rosa de Jamaica, and they've included that into, um, you know, beverages that they make. And I feel like maybe this, maybe this is true. I'm not sure, but like we're, I think Green Wave is on the menu. Like they, Could they be. give us some sort of credit on their menu. It's really sweet. Yeah. Thanks, guys. What else is happening, Angel? Okay, well, uh, for the people here locally, I mean, anyone can check this out, KarenMoganSonReserve.org. Um, not Morganson with an R, but like like Moog, like Vogue, strike a pose, Moganson. Mm -hmm. um, I'll maybe put that in the comments later as well. Yeah. Um, they have an event, uh, KMR has an event tomorrow at Ylang Ylang. I think it's at 4 p.m. I'll share that on my fa personal Facebook post as well as the Green Wave page. And um, even the house page, why not? 
to promote um, their talk. So they're kind of on tour. I went to the one uh, a week or two ago over kind of like on the other side of town. And um, we're gonna go support again tomorrow. It's one of the um, organizations that Green Wave has worked with for a few years now and um, very proudly so. They um, have done, ooh, it's just a beautiful project, you know, this biological reserve, a lot of history there. So if you're local, please come. And, um, and if it sounds interesting, if you like wildlife and, you know, the idea of conserving land and reforesting land that was once degraded, and um, then you can check out the website later. Uh, what movie did we see this week, Penny? We saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on movie night. That's right. And uh, so we already talked about, like, there's no rain. But we came out of that movie, and there was the most incredible, like, I mean, for rainy season, we just don't see stars like this. And we saw, like, the Milky Way, and it was very fitting, um, but then also concerning, like, ah. Uh, it's definitely not raining tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Skies were too clear. Way too clear. The um, guardians were guarding the galaxy too well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so today I had, yeah, the guardians were guarding too well. Um, oh, wait, John has a question. Green has been huge in the news lately. It has. Interesting. And then have you both seen Sounds of Freedom? No. Uh, if you have a link, go ahead and post that, I guess, and we'll check it out. Maybe talk about it next week. Um, well, I don't want to speak for Ken. Have you heard of Sounds of Freedom? I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, then we'll check that out. All right. Um, so today uh -huh. I saw this yellow butterfly mm -hmm. and um, I had to go water kind of this banana line that we had planted, you know, thinking that it was rainy season and they would be, uh, you know, watered by nature. Um, and, you know, they're pretty resilient, but it's been like several days, like five days or something. So I went and I watered them a little bit and I saw this yellow butterfly and it was super beautiful. And I just thought it was so cute because it was visiting yellow flowers. And it just reminds me of the way that like, it just always feels when I'm, you know, really paying attention that like how collaborative nature is and how like artistic nature is and, you know, like, the butter, I like it because I see this a lot, you know, it's, you have like um, animals that have camouflage and, you know, they could uh, be like the white stray cats uh, that we see that just stick out, you know, but instead a lot of times what you see is like adapted animals and insects and um, you know, Ken accidentally grabbed a snake the other day because he thought it looked like a vine. I was I was grabbing <laughs> some weeds which included vines and one of the vines started to move and it was all gushy. And gushy. I noticed it was a small snake. <laughs> so we have um, our local biologist here. He's a neighbor, Joaquin. He actually works with um, KMR, Karamogensen Reserve, and uh, we'll be giving the talk tomorrow. So. Often if we see something that we don't know what it is, we want to identify it, we send it to him and he said, oh yeah, that's a tree snake and they're mildly venomous. Um, to me, they, like I don't think the mouth, the snake was not aggressive, um, but it also was like a baby. It, was, it had this look, like we see baby geckos a lot and they have this, they just, they just look innocent. Like they don't look, they look kind of like maybe their brain's not fully developed, you know? And this snake kind of had like the same like little doe-eyed look, like really big, big eyes, super skinny neck. Um, and Ken said it really well. He's like, this snake was just born like <laughs> two hours ago. Yeah. Could have been. <laughs> yeah, it was um, super cute. It was, a, it was like long though. Yeah, pretty long. It was long. Yeah. And so it was in this trailer like what do we call that latissing of like how do we describe that it's like the fence the back it's like it's small back. chain link yeah, yeah. but it's not so anyway i'm trying to get this snake off here they, here they call it maya m-a-l-l-a -L -L -A. okay i don't know what you call it <laughs> so i'm trying to get the snake off you know with like a stick being really gentle and it keeps like <laughs> tying itself into knots i'm like oh man um but anyways, eventually, like, it realized, like, oh, you don't want me here. And it, like, got, I, it went into the garden. And I'm assuming that, you know, instincts will kick in at some point that will go and find a tree. So, 
Uh, and then I had this other question that came upon me this morning um, during the banana and butterfly moment. And I was just looking at this lime tree. Um, <laughs> I know I sound like that kombucha guy. Um, I hope he's still on, you know, the kombucha guy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Karen! <laughs> Yay, Karen! Um, so anyway, I was looking at this lime tree, and it's a, it's a tree that we did not plant. And um, maybe someone planted it, or maybe a bird pooped and, and it grew. I'm not really sure how the lime tree got there, but we basically my point is that we don't prune it or anything. And I was just looking at it and thinking, yeah, I mean, is pruning a cultural thing? Like, do... Do, does every culture that has agriculture, like are they always pruning or do they let it go wild? And as much as I love to cut things and I love to prune, I also sometimes don't follow all the rules and I, I'm like, they, sometimes I think the trees wouldn't look like trees if we just let them grow wild. I mean, they like to like have their branches be low and they do all sorts of crazy things and you're supposed to like cut branches that cross each other. But what if we didn't? I was looking at this tree because it's like a little unkempt. It had like all these angles and it's, well, you know, spiky and... There's a lot of trees that don't get trimmed. We still look like trees. No, I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, like, like what would the world look like if we, we never pruned a tree? It looked like a forest. It would look pretty good. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Daniel, yeah, TCM. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I left that out, Hi, of, out of our what this is. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Well. Anyway. Well, he knows. Daniel knows. Daniel knows. <laughs> um, um, and then we have show and tell today. Oh, you already did it. Yeah. My, I have well, show and tell. You guess. I know, but I just wanted to show things. Go ahead. Things. Okay. So, um, Ileana brought this. Ileana um, helps us. Uh, a few times a week, and she noticed that um, at a restaurant that she works at, that she she saw a bunch of sunflowers, and she knows that we don't. Well, we do have a certain kind of sunflower called mountain sunflower, but like this would be more of like a like what people would consider a sunflower. And so she brought us seeds. I thought that was really sweet. So I'm excited to um, to plant those, see if they take. But they're doing really well at the restaurant that she works at. Um, Daniel says, uh, Sean's loft. I can read. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> um, and then look at this little guy. This reminded me of a seahorse. And since I'm a mermaid, I thought that was very cute and appropriate. Is that adorable? I don't know. I just, I love that. Do you see it? I see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's my show and tell this week. Did you see an owl? Okay. So Pippa who uh, so is her next door neighbor. Yeah, she's almost our next door neighbor. She's got doors to put in, and um, but her lighting is all up now. She, uh, she actually wanted to heavily prune a tree. And, um, and so she sends me this picture yesterday of this owl. And I have not seen an owl like this here. It's rare to see owls, I mean, they're nocturnal. Um, and it had like the had like the horns, like that kind of an owl, and it looked like it was sleeping because it was like during the day. It had <laughs> squinty eyes. And I said, "Oh my gosh, where is that?" And she said, "It's on the lime tree." So not the lime tree. I was just talking about the, this other lime tree. There's a lot of citrus here on this um, in this community, <laughs> and I and I teased her and I said, "Well, you can't prune that tree now." And she's like, "I know, it's so cute." And um, yeah. Owls are great. I, I love them too. Now, those of you who did not see the photos, uh, we posted it on the Green Wave House page, which is one of the three pages that Farm Talk Friday appears upon. Today we're on my page. Sometimes it's on Giovanna's page, sometimes on the Green Wave House. But uh, we posted the photos of uh, the foxes. We did? Yes. Ah, okay. So we saw four foxes yeah. this week. We had only seen one fox at a time in the past and it was rare. Like the first time we saw a fox was years ago and we had this picture Ken took of it and we were pretty sure it was a fox. Yeah. 
But we were also now, like, but yeah. we don't really know. But now we're positive. You, now we're positive. Um, and so I had something, maybe it was last year, it was definitely several months ago, and I was working outside of our little, this Farm Talk Friday studio. And, um, and at night, and all of a sudden, like this animal jumps onto the deck, and we both had this moment of like, what do we do now? And I was looking at him, I'm like, oh my God, you're, you're a fox. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it went away, and I hadn't seen it forever. And then our neighbor Phoebe saw two foxes the other day and tells us, and she's just glowing. She's like, it's so rare, that's so amazing. Two foxes. I'm like, I've never seen two foxes, but we've seen them. And then we saw four, four the other morning. It was like two pairs. Like they, I don't know if it was like a mom and dad and then their teenagers behind them, but it was, <laughs> it was really cool. And Ken got some really great shots. And they're small, they're small. They're petite foxes yeah. and they're more gray. They're not like the um, Auburn foxes that we see in uh, cartoon movies and stuff. And they seem friendly. We don't know if they are, but they seem really <laughs> nice and friendly and reserved. Well, the and second they, and, set, they, and yeah. they haven't gone after our chickens. There's our not chickens yet. right there. Yeah. There's our two little mobile chicken tractors right there. Now, uh, our chickens have not been, our hens have not been laying too many eggs lately. They so go through dry spells. We would like a lot of positive egg laying vibes sent towards our girls right there. Uh, we don't know if it's the food. That's yeah. why I was reaching out to Ryan about the grain, because uh, they're not on the Parahermosa spent grain right now. So uh, it's a change in food, so maybe that's it, or maybe it's just a cycle. It could be a cycle. Yeah. They, were, they were broody, uh, but yeah, it's, the broodiness has been a while for, especially our little punk, Guy, who lays the green eggs. Um, okay, so we got owl and foxes. I yeah. think that's it. That's, you know, I was praying for our girls. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and thank you to, um, well, Permaculture Party Club. Mason, Jeremy, you keep showing up. That's awesome. Um, Holly, thanks again for the, uh, well, allowing us to use your image for the new banner. <laughs> then coming up with our, our new um, sign. And uh, she also donated two tires and I'm, I'm gonna use one of them as a, I wanna make a dust bath for the girls. Okay. I'm gonna try it out, so. All right, we'll see you next week on Farm Talk Friday. Ciao, have a wonderful weekend.